Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Raw Knuckles podcast. We'd really appreciate it if you'd like, subscribe, and share with a friend. When I stepped on the ice, I never backed down, and I never stayed down. And I was vicious, and I was malicious, and I don't care. (laughs) I'm alive. He's a freaking madman. Look at him going to town. That'll be a suspension. That'll be a fine. Alive, I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive. Hey, what's up, Dennis? How are you, pal? Welcome uh, to the Raw Knuckles podcast. Uh, Habville, I got to tell you, last night, uh, they have a dinner every year before... Uh, the season and they bring in some of the box holders and some of the um, season ticket holders that have been there for years. Anyway, it's big dinner, some alumni and the current team. Okay. I got to tell you, and it was fun. It's so different now. Like Mark Bergevin didn't want the old guys around. He he thought it put too much Mm -hmm. pressure on the kids. These guys, it's totally different. So they bring us in and they sit each player at a table. And one of the old guys sits with one of the new guys. So who sure, do they put sure. knuckles with? Wi-Fi. They put me with Abba Jack guy. And I'm going to tell you, okay? <laughs> I, I mean, I was so happy they put me with him. But they should have mm-hmm. put me with Drew in. Um, right, of course. But they put me with him. And I got to tell you, the size of his hands, it is oh, unbelievable. Yeah. No, I'm telling you, cat. Dennis, mm-hmm. it's insane. Like, I couldn't believe how bad. My hand just got lost. I shook his hand that. My really? hand just got lost in there. I mean, <laughs> oh, my. anyway, uh, it was a nice night and uh, it was a good kickoff uh, for some of the Habs fans. But listen, yesterday, big press conference here. Kerry Price um, yeah. come out. Uh, he said he's still holding out hope. There's a possibility of maybe another injection instead of surgery. He'll have to see. He just wants to uh, continue trying to solve this problem with his knee. And the surgery, um, it, mm-hmm. he said it's a little worrisome for him. So what do you think the deal is here? Like, I, I want to get your take where you think he's at and will he ever play again? I think it's a family decision, Nux. I don't think that uh, at this point he should be concerned about playing hockey. He should be concerned about picking up his kids, you know, walking down the street, Um the quality of life, and I, it's not life threatening here, but it, it's look. I can't blame Carrie for wanting to play. We all love this game. We want to be on the ice. It's what defined Carrie Price for the better of what fifteen to twenty years. You want to continue on that track if you can. Uh, not doing surgery and doing an injection. I don't know. This looks like a chronic knee injury that's never going to get better. Um, I have arthritis in my neck and my hips, and I know the stuff that's, that there's no cure for it. So. Uh, if Kerry can get to a point where he is playing and he's healthy and it doesn't affect the quality of his life going forward, sure, why not? I can't make that decision for him. Uh, but it's his right to make the decision. But again, I, it, it's really got to be a family conversation that uh, I'm sure he's had and will need to have yeah. if it gets to the point where he can play again. Yeah, you know, in listening to him yesterday, um, you know, he talked about, you know, taking it step by step. I was trying to kind of look yeah. a little deeper and listen to what he was saying. He said his first priority is to get his body in a place where he's pain free in his day to day living and then go from right. there. I happen to think that he will play again here. I happen to think, and, and this is my optimistic knuckles. Um, mm-hmm. I think he's going to be home all year, he's going to take care of himself. He's, he's, he's going to do therapy. He's going to heal. He's not going to be going up and down. And I think he's going to look at this team and kind of gauge where they are. And mm-hmm. if, sure. you know, he starts to feel better, he's home all year with the kids and the wife, and he starts to feel better. And this team looks like, geez, they're starting to come together. Um, next year, there's a, I think there's a possibility he plays next year. I do. Well, if he says you know? he's looking he, he looking to get healthier then to play with the goal to play, then he, he could play. I wouldn't put it past him or any other professional athlete. It's the question of, you know, you know if you get to a point where you're you're healthy and, and you're deemed fit to play, uh, how long are you going to play? Like, how reliable is that knee? 
playing hockey and playing goal. Right. Right. So I think that's it. It's yeah. sure. I can get to a point where I can rehab this and help it again, but what's the odds and chances that if I'm any athlete with respect to the seriousness of this knee, I'm asking the orthopedist like, okay, I, I can get on the ice in three months. And then what's the odds of me getting hurt again? So I think that's the other question is that this is not, like this knee is not improving to a point where it's healthy. It's improving where you can get on the ice. It's never going to be 100% at this point. So um, it, it's if he, if he wants to play, that's great. Uh, and I think you're right. I think if the team is looking better and there's a little bit more motivation, would he want to go out for a play for a team that had, you know, 65 points? I doubt it. So they've got to be in a path where the, the games are meaningful. So, yeah, it's his right to do it. He's under contract. But, again, I think it's it's – it's now a chronic thing. And and can they give him yeah. reassurances that he can play another two, three years after not playing for a couple of years? Yeah. Well, I, you know, again, my positive uh, side tells me that, you know, if he does feel better at the end and, and, and if he does come back, that they handle him a whole lot different than they did before. And you spot play him, you let the other guy take the reins. And then if the playoff comes, and he's, he's got enough games in down the stretch where he feels good enough to go because he did say, um, the only thing I really don't have is a Stanley Cup. And I'd mm-hmm. love to win a Stanley Cup in whatever position, some position. Mm-hmm. So, like, may, maybe in management or something down the road. But he, he when I heard him say that, I mean, I, I know it's on his mind. He'd love to add that to his resume. Right. but. We will see. Uh, it's a long season, and um, I, I'm hoping he does come back because he's been through a lot. He's been, you know, put this team on his back for so long and, and you know, certainly been through a lot, and I'm just hoping that uh, he sees the ice again one day. Um, yeah, listen, this team looking pretty good, and um, yeah. the Dallas the other night, they got in a little bit of shootout with them, and, sure. God, Dallas, you know, they surprised me. No, listen. Yeah. I know they had a good team, but they they really look like like legit, legit Dallas. Yeah, well, they're never going to give up a lot. I've just been great for them, and so is Scott Wedgwood. He's been fantastic for him as well. Uh, so that that the goaltending's been solid. Joe Pavelski doesn't look like he's what thirty eight or thirty nine. Thirty eight. Uh, yeah, he's thirty eight, and Robertson coming back is huge for them. So <clears throat> I think the key to this team is Tyler Sagan. He looks healthy. Um, he's not playing top line minutes anymore because now Rupe Hintz is. Uh, so they were like a sleeper team. Like you knew they were going to be in the playoffs, but it's a great start. They're getting enough offense. But again, I think Ty, who's been injured a lot, he's had three different surgeries over the last couple of su- summers. If Ty can give them 70 points from the second line pivot, um, they're going to make the playoffs. And they may actually challenge Colorado. They have all the components. Yeah, listen, We last week, uh, actually before the game, the day before the game, uh, I taped an episode here of Ron Knuckles podcast with Joe Pavelski and mm-hmm. he came on and, um, I, I, you know, I, I talked to him. I said, what, what, what do you think like the 38 year old Joe Pavelski would say to the, you know, 22 mm-hmm. year old Joe Pavelski coming in the league. And he said, you know, one of the biggest things that I, I, I guess I, I didn't understand how much you really have to pay attention to your body. And mm-hmm. and yeah. take care of your body, yes. and it, it, obviously he's done it. He hasn't been hurt a lot, and he's put up the points yeah, every year, been... and he's just still going. It's pretty amazing uh, the career he's had. Uh, yeah, I love and... that player. I think he's fantastic. I remember, no, he was a seventh round draft pick too. Yeah, was, I remember talking when he for, scored his first goal. I think it was in L.A. But so seventh round pick, nobody heard of the guy, and he's been just phenomenal. Look, the Sharks haven't been the same since he left town. You, know, you talk about leadership. Um, maybe he's not a you know guy to wear seat, but he he he's certainly a leader. He's a leader in Dallas. He's still productive. He he just has a gift for tipping in the pucks. People have known about that and seen the videos. And I always practice that. This this is this is not a Hall of Fame player, but this is a really like very good to great player. Just to, be, like you mentioned, the ability at 38 to still be productive. Very few players can do that, and Joe's one of them. Now I know it's early, Dennis, but God, uh, there's some surprises in the early go. I didn't think Boston was going to come out of the gate like they have. Yeah. Coaching change has proved to be pretty good. They got some injuries. Really, I, I think they've surprised me. Vancouver surprised me the other way. I mean, they have not won again. What's going on there? Hey, hey, come on, defense. listen. Yeah. 
Yeah, he, yeah. But Boudreau came in last year and it took off. They went awesome, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Don't tell me they're getting sick of him already. No, I don't think that's the case. No, no. Rutherford was on um, Hockey Night in Canada after I was with Scott Elk. And he said, look, you know, we tried to make the defense better. We could The defense wasn't any good. And off the bat, Thatcher Demko wasn't playing well. He, he wasn't good in net. So you, your defense is subpar. Your goal is not going to play, uh, isn't playing well. You're going to lose games. And they've lost a lot of games. I don't think they have to quit on Bruce. But, again, they had problems on defense. And they never fixed them. They couldn't, they said they couldn't find a, a deal. Well, now look at the team. Like they're they're on the verge, Nux, of almost being out of it. Like that's a big hole he got, and that's why Bruce was there because Travis Green got a big hole. I don't think they've well, put on Bruce. He's a player's coach. You can't tell what happened over the summer where all of a sudden they don't like him anymore. No, the team isn't good defensively. They didn't get goal tending for the first six or seven games, and that's why they're in a hole there. How about um, those Buffalo Sabres? Are they teasing us? Is yeah. this like uh, smoke and mirror? What's going on? I don't, know. I don't know if it's smoke and mirrors because you go into Alberta and you beat Edmonton and Calgary. That's not smoke and mirrors. That's a good, talented Hello? team. Yeah. yeah, with yeah with with Owen Power. Rasmus Dahlin's setting records on with goal scoring. Uh, Tage Thompson's good. Alex Tuck, and that wasn't a bad trade for Buffalo getting rid of Jack. Alex Tuck coming down, Peyton Krebs. It, it, it's a solid team with a lot of, uh, of youth. I think the question with this team is depth. And is Eric Comrie going to continue to play the way he's played in net? And Angels, to some extent, they're getting really solid goaltending. So I, I think potentially this is what you'd see from this team consistently over probably the next season or two this season. Are they early? They're definitely early. But when you look at the games, it's no mistake. They're not lucking out into these wins. They, they have depth. They're getting solid goaltending. And the defense potentially has a couple of superstars in it in power and Darlene. So, or uh, – Definitely power. Darlene's a guy who, you know, wow, he had a couple of bad seasons, but now the team's better, so he's playing better. Wow, what a shock. So I think they're early. Do I think they'll travel for, tie for the division? No. But given this team, like there's no reason for the Buffalo fans not to go back to the to the rink and watch this team play because they're exciting, they're fun to watch. Um, there's no COVID restrictions or anything like that. So they should be filling the, the, the rink because it's been a long time coming in Buffalo. They've been on a 10-year plan, but – they look yeah. to be free Lux, but I, I don't think they're a division winner yet. But if they play 500 hockey, 80 points, I think that's a that's a nice move. If they're playing games of consequence where in March, talking about making a trade as a buyer, that's a, that's a win for this team, I think, this season. To make the playoffs, it's a little bit of a big ask right now. I mean, at some point here, we're going to have to say, oh, uh, you know, it's, it's still early in the season. What point yeah. is that, 20 games? 20 games, maybe? Yeah. You stop saying it? For, some teams for – well, look, I, I remember a couple of seasons ago, the Ducks were playing really well. And it was – it was it was uh, halfway through the season. And I think I wrote or said, well, it's not a good start. This is a good team. And they fell – you know, they, they, they fell out of the sky the second half. So, I, I think 20 gives you an indication of what type of team they're going to be. And it's how this team loses. They have blown out and lost. I think, okay, maybe the defense is there. It's too young. Maybe the goaltending is not there. But by 20 games, I, I think not only we do, Nux, I think the GMs get an, a, a little more flavor for what this team, what their teams have and what they need. So, yeah, by 20, that, that's a fair, that's a point to saying, okay, this is a really good start. Not, okay, they just came out of the box up. So, we can say the Flyers at 4-2-0 have had a great start, but do you think they're one of the teams that can continue on that path, or are they going to mm-hmm. be where they were projected, down the bottom of the league? Mm-hmm. Didn't they lose to the Sharks at home and got shut out? And, yeah. and then Connect, Connectney and uh, 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 Kevin uh, Hayes got benched in the third period. So that's, yeah. uh, you know, that's the only way towards can punish guys is by taking away ice time. No, I, I think if they're a 75-point team, it's going to be a win for them. Look, here, here's what's happening, right? They're playing harder, and there's more structure in their game. That's what Torts came in to do. You could see it off the bat. This is yeah. a, this is a coach that that you know is not going to mess around. He's going to sit his big guys when they don't play well. So I, I I don't think no. I think it's a nice start. I think they've stuck up on on teams. They played really. They played solid defense and getting good goaltending. That's why they're winning games, not overpowering games. But when I see them lose at home to a Sharks team, that's very going to get shut out. I'm like, okay, yeah. this is probably the identity of this team. But again. Torts is coming in to do a job, and the first two jobs, as I mentioned, was put in structure and have been playing hard, and they're doing that at least off the bat. 
How about, uh, I, I got a kick out of it, but uh, Phil the Thrill, uh, going to be the Iron Man in the NHL. It's unbelievable that, <laughs> like, the, the ribbon this kid took because of his body doesn't look yeah. like he's cut. But apparently, he's an incredible athlete. Apparently, he can hit the golf ball a mile. Yeah. He can play soccer. They, they said he can do everything well. And mm-hmm. here's this kid that certainly got teased because of his body shape. And it's unbelievable what he's done. Oh, yeah, without question. I mean, he's not a Hall of right? Famer, right? But but he's going to score. They thought he thought he scored his 400th last night, and they took it off. I saw it. Offside. Offside. That was, that was tough. But, uh, look, some you, know, you can't worry about it. Not everybody is, you know, is cut like you, Nux. Not everybody's 6'2", and, you know, <laughs> 200 pounds. You know, and, some, and he found a way. And, look, maybe it's great that he is not that muscular, and maybe that's why he's avoided injury. Maybe you yeah, have something uh-huh. to learn from that. And I'm sure it also goes to diet and, and lifestyle and stuff like that. But his teammates love him. He's, wherever he's played, he's he's been beloved. So uh, it's a great record. The guy I feel sorry for is Keith Yandel. He had the record for like a minute, Nux. And then, you know. Uh, he, I know, and then huh? Kessler, and then Phil comes along and takes it. But that's a, that's a major accomplishment. Not to ever get sick. Not to be banked up to the point where you just can't go. And just to play every single game every night. Even when they really mean, didn't mean much at, at times, especially in Arizona, that's a real tribute to this player, and he shouldn't be, never should have been criticized because he only did was win a couple of cups, and you know he's going to score 400 goals in this league. How many players in the history of the league have done that? Yeah, you know, I when you look at throughout the league, and I play with a guy, um, um, Doug Javis, like he yeah. was the Iron Man there at one point. Was. I was like, are you kidding me? You look at him, and he's so un- <coughs> unassuming. You wouldn't think. He played yeah. 964 straight games for missing one, Doug Javis, which is incredible. You look at him, he's just a wee yeah. little guy, right? Yeah, yeah. And I, yeah. And I remember the, know, guy before, the guy and the guy before him, Gary Unger, who played center for the Blues. Yeah. I'm, I'm old enough to remember those guys. But yeah, Doug, Doug Jarvis was not a big guy at all. That just, And maybe that's the secret. Maybe you can't be the biggest guy because there's more, there's more spots in your body there. Yeah, it's pretty. Uh, it's pretty incredible uh, what uh, what this he's sport. done. Yes, it is. It, yeah, it is uh, because believe me, I know the injuries you know, I had Cole over Pete. the time. I'm like, how the hell you go all that time with not missing a game? But it's pretty cool. So, what do you got this week? Any big games uh, that you're going to be looking at this week, Dennis, in the NHL? Yeah, well, um, the Leafs continued a road trip, and that effort effort last night in Vegas was. Boy, I don't know. It's, if I'm the coach, I'm a little bit worried there. So they're actually coming here to Los Angeles um, on Saturday. So I just want to see what's going to happen because the, the efforts have not been good enough for a team that talented. So that's uh, that's what I'm uh, looking at. And then I just want to see you know how Edmonton and Calgary play up here. I mean, Edmonton, they were, they were getting beat pretty well last yeah. night, and they just took like a rocket ship. And they just exploded on after on McDavid got went into the net, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I had 20, 26 shots in one period. It, it's just um, the, the Pacific is going to be better. And the other teams I'm going to be watching is, you know, Seattle's playing way better. They're not going to win every game. I don't think they're a playoff game, but if they're an 80 point team. They're going to be dangerous. They've got more offense. They're just, they look, um, and they look more entertaining to me. That That's, yeah. that's the, the most important thing is that, you know, the, the, the shine wears off. Not everybody could be Vegas first year to go to a cup final. It's it's as crazy sports town Seattle. They have a beautiful new arena, but that team to watch and I watched a lot of the games last year. They were so boring. They just couldn't score. And then they get Bjorkstrand. Then they get Burkowski from um, from Colorado in free agency. Uh, the Bennett, Matty Beniers looks really really good. So I'm gonna just see how how Seattle keeps playing because right now I think they're two two and two. They came to LA and won a game. Um, it, it's just a better quality product, which I think is good for the Seattle fans. All right, Dennis, you, uh, we got to go back to the Leafs. And I, I want to sure. go back to him because Sheldon Keefe and you, certainly the connection with the general manager, he brought mm-hmm. him along. And yep. um, this could be on the hot seat. This GM could be on the hot seat here. Do you think this team might be kind of tuning him out? We heard what he said at the beginning of the year with a quote yeah. about my elite players weren't yeah. there and blah, blah, blah. And then he tried to cover it up like he didn't mean nothing bad about yeah, it. Yeah, I wouldn't have done that. Players see through that shit, you know? Yeah, yeah. 
I look, he's definitely on the hot seat because some of the efforts, like the, the game against Arizona at home, my partner Dave Panyota, before Peter yep. he goes, it's, this is unbelievable. It's so boring. It's 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 terrible, and you can't have much left. You know, you because players read all the clippings, right? They read yep. all the press. They, everybody knows that Arizona is supposed to suck. So why are we going to play that hard? So we're going to throw our sticks and gloves and skates out there. And we're going to win the game, and it didn't happen with it. The, the effort in, in in Vegas, I don't know. That wasn't. They weren't playing that hard. Uh, uh, Austin hasn't scored. Yeah, there's a pressure on everybody. There's pressure on Keith. There's pressure on Dubas. I mean, I keep asking everybody the same question. Like for Toronto, what does success look like for this team? Is it winning around? Is it going? Is it getting out of the division? Is it going to the Cup final? I don't even know anymore. But they got to win a playoff round. But if they don't get better effort, because that effort last night, the effort against Arizona, I'm like, nah. And, and I don't think it's. Be honest, that scheme is really uh, empowering the players to be at their best. I just, I don't, I think there's a lot of issues there. And, and but if it's going to be effort and they're going to have, have and maybe there was too many hands of blackjack the night before because they did get bit, they got in a day early, not so they, yeah. they were probably watching NFL games at the sports book or playing blackjack or roulette. Um, yeah, who? It's got to be better. And it's always going to be pressure. This can't be a 500 team. Are they too vanilla? Time. Um, there's not a lot of spice there. and not all that, but now Jake Muzzin's hurt and he could be gone for a long time. I think his neck's hurt. So yeah, it, they're not, they're, they're not equipped to win playoff games. They're equipped to, to be a 110 point team, which is great. But if you can't even do that, then what's the point? I, I, I would be worried. And look, I don't blame Sheldon Keith because he didn't even call out anybody. He said, my elite players need to be at Warren Lee. He didn't say, hey, Austin, you suck. Or Mitch, you need to play harder. He didn't even yeah. criticize it. And then he took he stepped back on that. And that's that's it's not what you want to do. It shows that you're weak. And it shows yeah. that, you, that you don't really have the power. And look, the players have the power now, right? You know, guys making yeah. $10, $12 million a year, they're going to have the power. But you, you got to play better than this. And if it's not, if he's not going to get the effort and the try from this team, then that's troublesome. And then you got to look for another guy and another message. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how this all plays out this season. Well, things look good here. Uh, I got to tell you, in Montreal, there's a lot of positives. And, um, you know, it. Um, yeah, it's looking good here for a change. I'm telling you, what a difference um, in, in the feeling around this organization and the team um, mm-hmm. compared to what it was. It just, it's refreshing, you know, when you see you these young guys come in. Yeah. Yeah. And you bring in outsiders. That's what happens. Ken Hughes wasn't a, you know, he's a, he's an agent, but he's not a, yeah. he's not a GM for 20 years. Things change at their ball. And when you're dealing with, and we're coming from an agent, we have to cater towards players. I yeah. think it's a totally different mindset because they understand it's not just my way or the highway. They don't, Ken comes from a, from a, a, a career where you had to, you know, coddle and, Sometimes babysit and just make yeah. the players comfortable. So I, I don't. I'm not surprised the attitude has changed. Scott Gordon came in and did a great job in New York, and they're leaning into their legacy. When you when you told me about that dinner, that's a great thing. Like if yeah. any team should lean into its history, it's the Montreal Canadiens or every facet of, of the team, whether it's you know hockey ops or marketing or whatever. It's the perfect thing to do these things. So I'm, I'm not surprised because. But, you know, it looks like the franchise is, is slowly getting into the, you know, into 2022 and what you need to do to to engage and even grow the game in Montreal. It still can be grown. How uh, how are your uh, Kings looking there, Dennis? Uh, they better get a save tonight against uh, uh, Tampa Bay. Uh, they're, they're deep. They're the 29th worst defensive team in the league. Um, they were told when they missed the playoffs last year. That, yep. hey, you need more, you need a more up tempo, you need more from your offense, your defense has to activate. And so they've done that, but they've activated, but then the commitment to back up on defense and the connection with the forwards, it's 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 not been a pretty sight. They're winning like you're not supposed to win game seven six. You're up two nothing in the in the third period in Washington, you give up four goals there. They've given up a lot of goals. And I could say maybe it's structured. There are some new players and players coming back from injury last year that kind of have to reacclimate themselves to the system. But you needed to get a save here. The, the save that they are last in expected goals above uh, 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 average with respect yeah. to saves. They just haven't got a, a big save. Um, they need to straighten things up. The good thing is the division really isn't that great. 
I think Edmonton looked great last night, but I think they're 500. Calgary looks really solid. Vegas, I think, is 5-2. and two. But they started 1-5-1 and one last season, and they made the playoffs. So to start, you know, 3-4, and four, nobody's really panicking in L.A. But the defense needs to be way better. How's Dano doing? Uh, Dano w- woke up. His first three or four games, like, I was looking for him. and sent an uh, 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 APB out on Phil. But uh-huh. he scored three goals down the last couple of games. It was a matter of – his face-up percentage is under 50%. So, uh, yeah. But I, th- I think he just needed to find his way. Um, plus, they didn't have Arbitson on the line. He missed the, the, the beginning of the, uh, of the season. He missed a couple of games. But he's riding into shape now. Dennis, man, thank you so much for joining uh, Knuckles again. I appreciate it. And we'll uh, do this again next week. Sounds great, Knuckles. Thanks for the time. Always great being on the Ron Knuckles podcast.